began First Book because we have this huge desire to enhance literacy, especially in the local area. And as educators, we all feel that every child has the right to learn and the right to be exposed to literature, regardless of his or her social economic status or where they're from. And in our community, our local community nowadays, we do feel that there are a lot of children who miss out on having books in their home and therefore are behind when they get to school and they don't like to read, they don't like learning, and that I think that really uh, deprives them of the education that other kids receive. First Book is a nonprofit organization. We are not out there to make any money or to make ourselves look better. All we want to do is give books to kids and allow children the right to learn whether they want to read, whether they like to read. We want them to have that right to be exposed to the same thing that every other child is exposed to. I love that. Tell me the name of your organization again. First book. First book. Great name. Um, first book should come before the baby's even born. First book should be read from the time the baby's born or perhaps while they're still in utero. Um, it can't start too soon. And the baby, the toddler, the preschooler will quickly begin picking those books up, him or herself. Now, here I am talking about an earthquake, and what happened was a tsunami. Was there an earthquake? Yeah, there was an earthquake and a tsunami. Well, how did we get the tsunami out of the earthquake? Um, because the place were islands. Yeah. I feel sad. It's, it's one of the worst things that could happen for them, because starting to read early is crucial to every step of education. When I think of my grandson with his stack of books, or the baby shower I went to on the weekend where the baby received books to get started, and they contrast somebody that doesn't have any, it's, it's pretty upsetting. Well, I feel that it's, you know, it's a, it's a sad thing when children don't have money for books and when their parents can't provide that for them because it's something that a lot of us just take for granted and books are really important to teaching literacy and helping kids to become lifelong learners and to love reading. So it's unfortunate that there are kids in that situation that can't afford to books. I think it's a great opportunity for children to be able to benefit from the organization and I think that it's a very simple way to really help kids to um, not get behind in learning and to be able to have access to things that they might not otherwise be able to have access to. So I think it's wonderful that people really understand how important it is for children to have books and for that to be a part of what they do every day. I think First Book Westminster is a fantastic organization that's providing a vital need in today's economy of 2011 for children and their families. We're still trying to get students to read things critically so that when they step out there into the world and they're at college or in a job, that they can look at copy and read it and know what it means and then apply it to real life.
whether it's the annual George report at work the or the essay Mexican test prompt the in college. A full of balls. If they're behind George a step, it really corner. doesn't help. It fit in uh, we also try to teach them like to the write with conviction. And it's hard to write with conviction if you can't hear the, the words, if you haven't you try to give her written ball, enough and read enough frightened. that you really George hear the language well. It's, it's a and great another. handicap. Look, a boy said, that monkey is juggling. What? <laughs> the boy took the ball from the cage and tossed it to George, but it went too high. George climbed up onto the fire truck to get it. Now George had four balls to juggle. He threw the balls higher and higher. The children need to read because children are so curious about the world around them. They are innately want to know what's going on, and the best way to get information is to read it. Reading is everywhere, literature is everywhere, words are everywhere, and the earlier that you can get a child to not only have literature, but like literature and want to learn more and want to read more, the better their future is going to be, the more options they'll have, the more optimistic they'll be about learning. Their choices for vocation are limited, their choices for earning power are limited, and often the, it's a vicious cycle then when they have children they can help them with schoolwork and reading because of their own limitations. It's very important, especially for younger children, to always be learning and reading and having people read to them. It's very important for their development. And also, when children get behind in reading and can't read or don't have access to books, it really does affect them throughout their lives and in other subjects uh, as you go along in, in high school and even in middle school. A lot of the other subjects rely on a child's ability to be able to decipher what they read and to learn from reading. So it's really important for children to have opportunities to build those skills early on before they get behind with reading. So it's a, it is a very important thing. You know their opening segment where they're showing the houses and they're showing the... Yeah! That takes place in San Francisco, California. Well, we know that when children leave elementary school, which in my school district, elementary school is K through 5, when they leave elementary school reading below grade level, it's very difficult for them to catch up as they move into middle school and high school. So we really want to give them all of the support services and intervention, and that's Title I's federally funded program, and that's one of our missions. So we work very hard, not only with the students, but trying to get the parents involved, because that is a key the research has shown also. Most of our books come from the first book marketplace or from Scholastic. We, we go and we buy these books and we get them at discount prices so that we can get the most books for the money that we spent. And they're all high quality, brand new books that we get at a discount price. I think school's a late start. If the child hasn't seen books, hasn't visited with books, hasn't learned to love them, hasn't learned to pick out a few words for himself and waits till kindergarten or first grade. I think he's, he's already way behind. And he can catch up, sure, and we're going to do everything to teach him. And how much better it would have been to have him earlier. Children who are exposed to reading early on are usually much more fluent readers, so if somebody has read to them at an early age or required that they read books when they're able to start reading and to read on a regular basis, just reading like that really does build the skills. So even if children are learning in school how to read but they don't have access to books and they don't have access to continually practice, they are not 
going to master the skills at the same rate as kids that do have access to books or that have been read to at an early age. So it's very, very important because even before children can actually read, if somebody's reading to them, it really does help build um, literacy skills and their fluency is usually a lot better in reading when they've had that exposure prior to even being readers themselves. I think that's a real problem in today's economy and that's why I think so highly of First Book Westminster. They're providing such a vital service to the children and their families. They can literally change their lives by providing that first book and, for, and giving that child the option of having someone read with them and to them and later read themselves and have that pride of ownership in the book. The other thing we know from research is students that get help early on and become successful in the reading process have dramatically less dropout rates, teenage pregnancy rates, juvenile delinquent rates. That early success in elementary school is vital. It can literally change a child's course of life. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh.